Let's take a look at how to complete the addition or subtraction sentence. We want to find the missing number. Some number plus 1.5 is equal to 5.3. Well, to figure out what that number is, we can work backwards. If we add 1.5 to it to get to 5.3, well, we can say, well, what was it before I added the 1.5? So to undo that, the opposite of adding 1.5 is subtracting 1.5. So let's subtract 1.5 from 5.3 to see what the number was before we added the 1.5. Okay, when you're subtracting with decimals, make sure that you're lining up the decimals in both of the original numbers as well as in your answer. My decimal is going to be right here lined up underneath. Okay, well 3 minus 5, I'm going to borrow from my 1's place. I'm going to make this a 4. So that's going to be 13 minus 5, or 8. Okay, so I have 4 minus 1, or 3, which gives me 3.8. So this means 3.8 plus 1.5 would add up to or equal 5.3. So I'm going to fill that in as my missing number, 3.8. 3.2 plus some number is equal to 6. Okay, and we want to figure out what the missing number is. So again, we can do the same process. If 3.2 plus some number add up to or equal 6, well, if I subtract the number that I know, right, if I subtract out the 3.2, I'm going to write this, so I'm going to say 6. Now remember, 6 is the same thing as 6.0, or you could put 6.00. You can put as many zeros as you want. Let's start with 6.0. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to subtract out 3.2. And that's going to leave me with what the other number should be. Right? We're just working backwards. If these two add up to 6, then 6 minus the 3.2 should leave me with the other part that made up the 6. Okay, so let's subtract, and remember we're lining up all of our decimal points in the two original numbers as well as in my answer. And instead of saying zero, so for zero minus two, I'm gonna borrow here. I'm gonna make this a five and bring the one over. So I can think of that as 10 minus two, which is eight. In my ones place, I now have five minus three, and that gives me two. Okay, so the missing number would be 2.8. Now notice, this should make sense. 2 plus 3 gives us 5, and then 0.2 plus 0.8 gives me a whole nother 1. So 5 plus 1 equals 6. So the missing number works out 2.8. Negative 2.1 minus some missing number is equal to negative 2.2. Now, in this case, notice the tenths place got one smaller. So I must be subtracting just one in the tenths place, right? Negative 2.1 minus another tenth would give me negative 2.2. Now, if you didn't notice that right away, you could have set it up as a subtraction problem, right? You could have said 2.2 uh, minus 2.1, what does that leave me with? But again, if you notice this, if I'm already at negative 2.1 and I drop it down by another one-tenth, then I'm going to get to negative 2.2. So you might be able to do some of these using some mental math. Negative 0.3 minus 4.8, what does that give me? Okay, well, let's subtract and find out. So notice... When you have 0 0.3 minus positive 4.8, our rule when you're subtracting integers is to add the opposite. So this is the exact same thing as saying 0 0.3 plus negative 4.8. Okay, well why would I change it around like that? To make my math a little easier. Because now I can say when I'm adding two negative numbers, I know my answer is going to be negative. And then I cannot worry about the sign. The number part is going to be the same as what I get when I add 0 0.3 and 4.8. So let's add those two together and see what it gives me. OK, 
Okay, lining up my decimal point. Now in the tenths place, three plus eight gives me 11. So I'm gonna put the one and carry one over. Okay, four plus zero is four, plus that extra one gives me five. Okay, and remember we already said our answer had to be negative. When you add a negative and another negative, you get a negative answer. So it would be negative 5.1. Find the missing number, negative 4.2 minus 0 0.6. Okay, well I can use the same thinking here. Subtracting a positive is the same as adding a negative. When you're subtracting with integers, your rule is you can always add the opposite. So I can add negative 0 0.6. Why would I do this? Well, just to make my math a little easier. When I'm adding two negative numbers, I know my answer is going to be negative. And now I can ignore the sign because I already figured out there's going to be a negative on my answer. So if I add 4.2 and 0 0.6, that's going to tell me the positive version. And then I can just put that with my negative to see what my negative number is. So I'm just trying to make my math easy here. So I'm going to say, okay, 4.2 plus 0 0.6. Okay, well, if you line up your decimal points, in the tenths place, 2 plus 6 gives me 8, and in the ones place, 4 plus 0 is 4. Okay, so 4.8, we already said our answer had to be negative, so it would be negative 4.8. Zero point nine plus what number would equal five point five? Well, this is where you could work backwards. If I know I'm adding some number to point nine and it gives me five point five as my answer, I can work backwards and subtract. The whole thing, five point five minus zero point nine, should leave me with what the second number was or what I had to add to it. Okay, so let's subtract. Now I'm gonna borrow one from here. I'm gonna make that a four. Remember, we're lining up our decimal points. And now I'm thinking of this as 15 minus 9, which would give me 6 in the tenths place. This became a 4, so 4 minus 0 gives me 4. So we would have had to add 4.6 to 0 0.9 to get 5.5. .5. 